Hello everyone, welcome to today's Novage webinar, Designing for Additive Manufacturing. Optimize and design for additive manufacturing using PTC Creo. With Creo's modeling capabilities, you can take designs to the next level utilizing pre-built lattice structure. Uh, furthermore, uh, Creo can help with support structure and especially, you know, if you have different type of printer uh, that you're going to use. Uh, a great tool if you're designing for uh, 3D printing and you'll see all about it in a couple of minutes. Today's webinar presenter is Cody Waltrout, uh, who is a graduate from Penn State and he has been with PTC for almost three years. He specializes in CAD and PLM topics. And uh, let me tell you a little bit, something excited about PTC. This is uh, the page uh, on our website, novage.com, where you can find uh, the PTC product line. And I want to let you know that we're running now a promo that will last until March 28th. And when you buy one seat of a Creo design package, you can buy an extra uh, extension for 50% off. And the ad additive manufacturer expansion is included in this promo. So, um, you know, take advantage of it if you haven't already. And Novage is changing the way designers purchase 3D software, offering more choices, more freedom, best advice, faster service, and no headaches. Check us out at novage.com. And uh, I will actually start uh, sharing your screen, Cody, because you have many more interesting things to say. <laughs> I do. All right. There you go. We see your screen now. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So hello, everyone. My name is Cody Wiltrout, and I'm going to be walking you all through some of additive manufacturing inside of Creo today and some of the direction that PTC is headed with that. So to start off with a little bit of background on why PTC is really investing in additive manufacturing, uh, 3D printing is a pretty revolutionary technology and it has the potential to really change the way that manufacturing is done. And the start to that process is really models. You need to have a CAD model to be able to have a design that you can print. Uh, but the problem with that is that a lot of CAD systems don't really address the challenges that come with 3D printing or give you tools to specifically help address those challenges. And when you have you know, kind of this flow, you can end up where you have CAD and added manufacturing being separate domains or separate specialists, separate entities and tools altogether. But realistically, it should be kind of a smooth transition between the two where you utilize the CAD to get into the additive manufacturing. Another problem is that a lot of times designs for additive manufacturing can be difficult to make, especially when you get into complex structures like lattice structures. Uh, and that's, you know, some of what PTC wants to address. And when you have those issues, you can often end up in the cycle where you start by optimizing your 3D print, going to do a print check for a prototype, and then finding out that you've had an issue. So you go back, re-optimize, rebuild the geometry, simulate, do another check, and you can kind of end up in this loop where you're just trying to iterate and make some changes and then check, and you end up doing a lot of rework with that. And so we're trying to close that loop completely and you know, really give you the tools to be able to design for additive manufacturing. Starting off with some of the capabilities that this can give you. Uh, number one, you have the ability to do 3D plastic printing from the part or the assembly mode. So you can choose to uh, go to print and then choose 3D print and you can choose to print out to uh, different printers and you can do this in a few different ways. So initially you could choose to do something like GrabCAD or 3DS print. So just kind of third party tools that you can send out and connect to the printers through if you would like. Uh, but you can also connect directly to the printers starting in Creo 5 using a build process framework for plastic printers that we partnered with a few different companies to help us make. And with that, then once you've you know got connected to the printer and have the ability to send that off and print it, now we can get into some of the capabilities that actually help you with the designs for that. So first off, we have capabilities for doing lattice modeling. So it allows you to quickly generate lattices and complex lattice structures without you having to go through and do a lot of work by hand. And you can do it by saying something like that you want to fill a void or shell a solid. And when you do that, it's just going to save all of that as one feature that you can see in the tree and then always make edits to if you need to. 
With the lattices, you can choose a few different shapes. So here we see some of the more normal ones with the regular quasi-radial and herringbone uh, options. And you can choose to do these in 3D uh, or 2.5D. We also have some newer lattice types. So the uh, regular quasi-radial and the herringbone started in Creo 4. In Creo 5, we added the truss shape as well, since that's a predominantly pretty stable type of lattice structure. Uh, we also have the ability, as I mentioned, to do two and a half D lattices. So if you don't want that full complex array from the 3D, you can slightly simplify that down and do something like this. Uh, now, adding additive manufacturing capabilities, you obviously want to be able to analyze those parts just like you would any other. And so you can use this with Creo Simulate and you know get feedback off of any of those lattices and make sure that that's going to be the right choice and fit for you. Uh, now, when it comes to actually sending these prints off, you have the ability to create and save print trays. So it understands the print envelope of the printer that you have, and then you can organize you know, parts or assemblies onto those trays to be printed. Uh, you can choose to do individuals or pattern it, however you want to do that. And then you can save that tray. And if you make any changes to your designs downstream, just push those updates downstream to your tray and you know, update your print and start printing the new version. Now, as I mentioned, there were some changes from Creo 4 to Creo 5, one of those being the added uh, truss type and the ability to connect directly to the 3D printers with that build framework processor. We also added the ability to do metal printing with additive manufacturing plus in Creo 5. And now with the metal printing, you have some of the same capabilities of being able to connect to the metal printers directly. And again, it's going to use that build framework processor that we've partnered with to create. Uh, now, you will need the driver from the printer, uh, but the printers come with those drivers, and then you use that to complete the build processor. Uh, now, with the added manufacturing plus, this is slightly more complex than the plastic printing. Uh, the support material has to be more specific, has to be able to be removed correctly. And because of that, we partnered uh, again with uh, Magic, or Materialize, I should say, Materialize Magic. And use their kernel to generate our support structures for the metal printing. So it can do that automatically for you and follow a lot of detailed options for that. And just like with the plastic printing then, you can put it into the tray, save the positioning, save the support structure, and if there's a change, automatically have those structures update. Now, continuing on from there into Creo 6, we've also seen a lot of focus and uh, additions to additive manufacturing. A lot of new lattice types came in Creo 6, the first one being the stochastic lattice type, which is a randomized beam structure, almost a foam type of structure, really. And it creates uh, you know, some good, depending on the density that you choose, compact uh, kind of just structure around there. They can be used for dampening of sounds and different things, you know, depending on what you're trying to use it for. But it's a very complex structure, and you know, trying to model that would take a very long time. But utilizing the lattice feature, you just say, hey, this is what I want. This is the volume that I want you to fill, and it'll go through and do that for you. Uh, we also added formula-driven lattices. So the formula-driven lattices are really for metal printing more so than the plastic printing. And that is because these are designed to be self-supporting. So the uh, kind of angles that it's printing at, it's making it so that you have to use less support material when you actually go through and print that. Uh, so some pretty advanced geometry for those uh, structures there and those lattices. You also now, starting in Creo 6, have the ability to create your own lattice structure. So if you don't like any of the lattices that we have or there's some new lattice that you're dying to try out, you can just make one cell yourself. So generate out the general shape and then say, okay, I want to use this as a cell, take this as the base and then build out from there. And so you would just start with that one cell type size, and you know, kind of orientation and then build it out and it'll do the rest for you. We've also added lattice transitions starting Creo 6, which allow you to transition you know, the density of the lattices for things like structural support and trying to use less material. We now have build analysis as well, which allows you to figure out the best way to build a print. So as I mentioned earlier with the metal printing especially, there are ways that you can cut down on the amount of support structure that has to be generated 
And this takes a look at that to see where the best placement is for the subcritical and critical angles so that you can use less support whenever you are actually printing that out. And so that will go through and run automatically. Well, you can choose to run it automatically based off of your printer's parameters and save yourself some support and some time in that printing process. The connectivity has also been improved with Creo 6, giving you a few new outputs that you can choose from. Uh, the first of these being the 3MF file format, which has a little bit more intelligence to it than some of the older uh, STL files and things of that nature, and just shares more information when you share that off. You also have the slice output now, so you can go through and see the slice by slice generation for that 3D model and export that out to someone as well if you would need to. So I'll go ahead and jump over to our tool so we can see what that looks like inside of Creo. For today's demonstration, we're gonna be working with this Polaris snowmobile. And to start off, we're gonna be working with a swing bar today. Now this is an example of what the traditional swing bar would look like before we might have switched over to additive manufacturing. So we would have welded this all together from multiple pieces and then brought that out and used it. But with this method, you know, maybe this isn't really the ideal way to use the least amount of material. We're having to bring in multiple parts and weld them together. What if we could just print it all as one part instead from a, from a 3D printer? Well, we can try that and see, you know, what the difference is really between them. So we already have a, another swing arm that we've generated and we can use some lattice structures in. And for this swing arm, we've just shelled out uh, the arms there to make it a little bit more lightweight and remove some of that material and that metal that we would be using. And now because this is being printed as well, we don't necessarily have to use welds for those connections. We can just print it all together at once. When we come to actually generating these lattices, there's a few different ways you can do that. As mentioned in the PowerPoint, you can choose to shell solids, fill voids, whatever it would be. Uh, but when you do that, you just select the surfaces that you want it to build the lattice structure to. And once you have that volume that you want it to fill selected, then you start getting into what type of lattice you want and what cell type specifically under that you might want. So right now we have a two and a half D lattice selected. Maybe we want to go to one of those newer formula driven lattices and choose maybe to change that cell size. We want to increase it from a seven and a half up to a 15. And again, you have a lot of options here with wall thickness, cell size, density, transitions, whatever it would be, even the resolution that you're going to be trying to print this in. So you can manage all of those properties and then at any time either apply it or preview it and it will show you what that lattice structure filling in that volume is going to look like. Now, at any time, of course, as well, you can always change your lattices and go back and change those maybe to one of the newer versions, or if there's, again, maybe a custom lattice that you make, you just come back in, choose the cell type, and it'll start updating. And of course, just like we saw, you can always change the sizes again, or the cell fill for the wall thickness and the densities, any of that, you can apply and easily update those models. And this works not just for the new formula driven lattice types, but of course those older lattice types that we saw from Creo 4 and Creo 5 as well, including the truss type and some of those two and a half D lattices. So taking a look at the last new lattice here, the diamond shape, we will go ahead and just fill that in and see what that looks like. Uh, now, once you you know, and users Cody, sorry to interrupt. Can you hear me? I can't hear you, so I wonder if you might want to jiggle your microphone and see if anything changes. So okay. you would publish it off, choose. Oh. Is there a question? 
Yes, no, I lost your sound for a while. I, hopefully it's just me. Never mind, you're back, carry on. <laughs> All right. Uh, so for everyone, uh, and if my sound is coming out, uh, you know, please feel free to let me know. <laughs> but continuing on here, uh, we have the ability then to share these off with different people and they can view that in kind of real space if they would like. And you could, you know, for example, take the player snowmobile and put it into a trailer and show, oh yeah, would it fill that trailer or spatially dimensioned, whatever it would be. But just a newer feature inside of Creo that is, you know, in all versions or not in all versions, but, you know, in Creo base. And so everyone has kind of the capability to try this out themselves if they would like. You just put in a spatial target like this, which really is just saying when you put this in view of a camera, how do you want it to be oriented? And then from there, you can send this off to someone and start viewing that. So something maybe, you know, if you haven't tried before, you could try out inside of Creo. And it's just gonna give you a general dashboard like this to see who you wanna share that with, share it with whoever you like, and they can start viewing and reviewing that information. Now going back more towards the additive manufacturing here, we're just gonna go ahead and delete that uh, little target that we've created. You can always choose to leave it there. It's not gonna show up in your bill of materials or anything, uh, but in our case, we're gonna say, yeah, we just wanna remove that. And now the next thing we could go into is doing some analysis. You know, We want to really compare if this swing arm is a more ideal version than the other swing arm that we had created originally using solid metal and welds. So we're gonna go ahead and just do some simulation on that. And to do that simulation, it's gonna be just like any other simulation inside of Creo. You can use Creo Simulate. Uh, you can also use some of the newer functionalities with things like Creo Simulation Live and do an analysis study to see structurally if this is going to be as sound as that full metal bar. Now, when we do this, of course, you know you can run it like any other analysis, choose what types of displays you're interested in, what information you wanna see and what your loads and your constraints are going to be. But what's also nice with Creo in this case is that you can do this simultaneously for the newest version here that we're seeing, as well as the original version with the full metal and the welds. And you can choose to orient those in the same way as well and lock that orientation. And if you want to, even the scales, so that it makes it a very easy comparison to really see what your best design option is. So in our case here, we'll go ahead and tie those orientations together. So we just say tie, and it will bring those into that same orientation. And then when we start looking at anything or start rotating, it's going to move both of them at the same time. So zooming in here on really where one of our points of weakness would be at the weld line, we can see we do have some high stress here, but it's sitting at around 500 and 69 uh, megapascals, so lower than on the other side there with the 607. So lighter weight and more likely structurally more sound. So, you know, pretty good options from there. So maybe I'd decide now I do want to print this since I like this design and I need to get this out to a printer. But well, we have some different options again to do that uh, from here. Uh, and the first thing that I want to do is say when I get it to that printer, how do I want to orient it? What's the best way to actually print this? And to do that, we can utilize that build orientation or that build direction analysis in uh, Creo 6 here. And we do that by setting what our critical and subcritical angles are, which are going to be specific to the type of printer that you're using and gonna be telling of, again, when it does that print, at what angle do we need to actually start using a support structure as opposed to letting it hang freely there. So we can just say, go ahead and compute that for us and run through it will converge on what the optimal answer is and once it is done converging on that answer then you can choose to save that as a build direction so you just save that as an orientation inside of creo and then when you get down to you know orienting this in the tray placement or sending this somewhere you can save in that direction and utilize it so we'll go ahead now, we can see we have that new orientation inside of here uh, with that build direction. So at any time we can always come back to that now. Now in terms of actual output from here, we could choose to directly go to the printer from inside of Creo here, or we could choose to do some outputs with some different file formats. So maybe first we'll start with a save as, and we'll try that uh, new 3MF file format. And then at the end of the demonstration here, we can take a look at what that looks like compared to just going ahead and 
sending it to the printer. So just like saving off as any other file format, you would just come in, choose 3MF, and then apply that. Now, if you did not want to do a save as, and you don't want to leave Creo at all, you can choose instead to just print directly from here. When you do bring these in then, you can choose the scale that that's going to be at. Maybe we want to scale that down some and then orient that onto our tray. And again, we can choose to use that build direction that we've already generated. We can choose to print one at a time. We could generate multiple inside of here. We can automatically generate our support structure as well. And again, for metal printing, that's going to be a little bit more complex than with the plastic. So just come in, choose the attributes based off of your printer. If you want to change anything, you know, you can, you can get really detailed into uh, some of the attributes there for this support generation, or you can choose to kind of just leave it at best practices and let it run as is. Uh, now, if you switch between different printers, again, it's going to update based off of that tray size that each one of those would fit into. Uh, so you can see if that's going to fit in there, make sure that you're all good for the print and that you're not going to have any problems. I did mention earlier that we also now have the slice file, so it can go through and figure out layer by layer how it's actually going to be generating out that support and that structure. And then you can easily go through at any point, look at one of those slices, or again, if you need to output that and share it with someone, you can always send that off to someone and they would be able to review how it's going through and actually building this out for us. Now, once we've run through our slice file here, um, you know, we could obviously then go ahead and say, yeah, you know, I'm pretty happy with this. We now know that it's structurally sound. I like it. We're going to save this print job. And if we make any changes later to any of the designs, we can push those changes down to this tray, save that orientation and reuse it. Uh, now, lastly here, as I mentioned, we have that 3MF output. So just to show you what that looks like compared to an STL, which is really just uh, some polygons generated from there. You get a lot more information here with the lattices and some of the colors, and it's a pretty good format to be able to share that out. It can also save those support structures, and then if you need to bring that to a third-party vendor or something, you can easily share that along. So just to kind of come back here and recap some of what we've seen, bring that back up here. Some of the value that this really can bring to designers looking to get into additive manufacturing and you know some of these new tools is that number one, it can help save you time. You know, you're not trying to, tr to mention those lattices by hand. You're not trying to always do a bunch of different outputs necessarily. You can just uh, connect directly to the printer. And then of course, if you're saving time, it's reducing your development costs, accelerating your ability to create new products and because of the ability to look at those build directions and things, improve your quality and your innovation. Uh, so I'll go ahead and stop here and see if there's any questions. Thank you, uh, thank you, Cody. Um, no questions so far, but I'll wait a couple of seconds. In the meantime, um, I'm going to share my screen. So I wanna show everybody where they can find um, PTC Creo on our page. Let me transition to the page. Here it is. You can see it. Um, and you can also see we have a special promo on the extension. So this additive manufacturing one can be yours for 50% off when you purchase one um, design care package. And uh, it looks like to me it's a great investment, a no-brainer if you want to speed your production and um, save money in the end so um find us at novage.com and or you know we have experts ready to talk to you and with any question you might have and uh, there are no questions for you cody which means um everything was clear as i understood it and um i want to remind everybody that i'd be recording um the session so you if you want to watch it again or show it to your partners, colleagues, you can go to Noveg or Vimeo on YouTube and um, find our channels and find the webinars later on today. Thanks again, Cody. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.